Perfect. So uh, welcome everyone to this demo about creating a copilot for Microsoft 365 plugins with Copilot Studio. Uh, what are we going to see today is the following. So let me set a bit of context like usual. Uh, we already saw previous episodes, uh, because this is a recurring demo nowadays, uh, that we can uh, extend uh, uh, Microsoft Copilot uh, with Microsoft Copilot uh, Studio, and we can create a custom plugin to extend uh, the experience of users while consuming Microsoft Copilot for Microsoft 365. What we are going to see today is that we can use Copilot Studio or MCS, Microsoft Copilot Studio, as a, a low code or no code tool to uh, create uh, uh, plugins for. And specifically, we can create uh, prompt plugins, conversational plugins, connector plugins, and power automate plugins. These are the flavors that we have nowadays. We have seen uh, uh, one week ago or so uh, with Daniel Laskavitz the prompt plugins, and today we're going to see how to create a conversational plugin. Whenever we have a plugin, it means that when we are in the chat, in the Microsoft 365 Copilot chat, we can click uh, uh, on a, a small button that we have in the lower right corner, and I will show you uh, in a live demo, and we can uh, activate uh, a bunch of custom plugins to improve uh, the content uh, and the uh, quality of the response that we will get back uh, from Copilot. When we want to do that uh, using Copilot Studio as the tool to create those plugins, we have to follow uh, these uh, steps. So first of all, we need to enable the Copilot Studio integrated app in our uh, environment. So we need to go in the uh, admin UI of Microsoft 365 under settings, integrated apps and available apps. And there we need to look for the Copilot Studio application as I will show you shortly. Once we have enabled the Copilot Studio application, we can uh, uh, use two different techniques nowadays to uh, create uh, a conversational plugin with Copilot Studio. One is to create a new custom Copilot and go into the uh, section related to um, Copilot extensibility and create a conversational plugin from there, and then we can publish it. Or another option is to use the new extended uh, under preview interface that we still have in in Copilot Studio. I will show you both. And then we can uh, enable the plugin in Copilot for Microsoft 365 and just have a chat uh, with the Copilot providing prompts and getting back answers, with, which will be enriched with content uh, that will come out from the uh, custom plugin that we created. And eventually, if you want, you can also enable the developer mode, as I will show you to have a better understanding of what's going on under the cover of the Copilot for Microsoft 365 when there is a one or more plugins uh, uh, enabled uh, in your chat. So that said, let me move to the demo environment and let me show you how you can do that step by step. And first of all, I will start showing you the plugin in action so that we can be all on the same page about what we are going to achieve. So here I am in the uh, Copilot for Microsoft 365 uh, chat UI. And in this area, as I was telling you, I can enable the plugins that I have configured in my environment. In order to be able to do that, I just need to click here and see what, are, what the um, plugins are. And specifically for the plugins created with Copilot Studio, you will find them under this section if you have uh, more than one of them. And here I have two uh, custom plugins that I created with my Copilot Studio. As you can see here, I can also enable uh, different flavors of plugins, not only those created with the Copilot Studio. In order to have Copilot Studio right here, I need to have uh, uh, in the admin UI of my tenant, uh, let me see if I can enable it, oops. Let me do this, sorry. Okay, gotcha. We go under the admin center of Microsoft 365 under settings, integrated apps. And here under the available apps, we can find the Copilot Studio and we have to select this application and we have to deploy it in our tenant. Of course, I've already done it. So it is already deployed in my tenant. And that's why I'm able to see this item right here in the UI. Now that I have at least a couple of 
plugins enabled in my copilot, I can start playing with it, providing prompts. And for the sake of uh, uh, showing you uh, uh, an example, I decided to create two different plugins, uh, one which will rely on the content of the Microsoft 365 conference website. So I can ask questions to copilot and I can get back answers about uh, what's available in the website of the conference, as well as I created another uh, plugin, which will simply rely on the uh, official online documentation under learnmicro.com about Copilot Studio itself. And that's why I have in my list of plugins uh, the MPCFI Conf and the MCS Docs ones. Okay, so let's say that I want to ask something to Copilot about the conference. And let's see what we can do. For example, I can say that I want to know where it will be the Microsoft 365 conference in 2024. I will send this prompt to Copilot. It will work to uh, gather all of the information and put all of them together. And I already enabled the uh, developer mode in my context so that you can see what's going on under the cover as soon as it will be available with an answer. Now it is looking for the location and it should be able to give me a, an answer uh, pretty soon. Okay, almost, but okay, so we have seen that I'm having, uh, I'm getting back an answer, which is not what I was looking for, but doesn't matter. It is most likely an issue related to the retrieval of information from the website, but at least we can still see that. However, if you want to register to the conference, you can use the following link, which is an information that I'm actually providing through my custom plugin that I created in Copilot Studio. And I also can see using the developer mode, what's going on under the cover. So for example, here when trying to consume my custom plugin, the uh, copilot for Microsoft 365 realized that there were three different plugins configured in my environment right now. And it was trying to match one of the functions, which was uh, the right one for my question. And it matched the Microsoft 365 conference plugin and its function. And then it was able to uh, actually query the plugin, but it didn't get back the, uh, the whole answer, but just a partial answer. Why am I telling you a partial answer? Because if I will go to Copilot Studio, we can see that right here under Copilot, I created an m 365 Conf Copilot, which is one of the techniques you can use to create a conversational plugin. And if you uh, go into the definition of this custom Copilot and you uh, expand the Extend Microsoft Copilot Preview section, and again, remember it is under preview, so every now and then it might not work. So uh, it, it is reality of life. It, they are still working on it, okay? If we go under Conversational Plugins, we can see that I have one, uh, conversational plugin defined right here. If I click on it, we can see that in this conversational plugin, first of all, I have a clear or uh, hopefully clear definition of what the plugin will provide to Copilot. This is text that will be processed by natural language processing by Copilot so that it will be able to understand when it is the right point in time to uh, use my plugin to provide an answer or not. So based on the description that I provide, Copilot will try to figure out if my plugin is the right one to use or not when providing an answer to the user. Then I will simply get the activity.text uh, input, which is actually the text provided by the user when triggering this uh, plugin as the input for the generative answers uh, uh, action in uh, uh, Copilot Studio. And I've just configured this uh, plugin and this uh, um, conversational plugin to rely on the Microsoft 365 conference website so that it will query and search the content into that website. And no matter what, at the end of every uh, interaction, I will always say to the user, remember to register for the conference providing a specific URL. And that's why I was able to see in the answer, even if it was not actually able to properly query the website in this point in time, still was able to tell me, to tell the user that uh, the registration should be done using this uh, uh, URL. So now let me try to use uh, a different plugin that I created, the one for the uh, Copilot Studio documentation, for example. So let me run another query, like what is Microsoft Copilot Studio? Really trivial question. Now it will work still like before, uh, evaluating all of the configured and enabled plugins and will then uh, identify the right one to use to give me a proper answer. So working on it again, hopefully this time we will get a better answer. And okay, now we are getting a better answer. Okay, wonderful. 
it is still working on it. Now we can see this is the answer that I've got. I can see that I have references to the content provided by the uh, Copilot plugin that I created. And again, uh, using the developer mode, I can see that now uh, here is the list of enabled plugins and the MCS docs was identified. This is the function that was used and the response was successful. So again, as like as before, we can see the uh, behind the scenes logic that uh, Copilot is using to identify and use the right uh, Copilot plugin built with Copilot Studio. How uh, did I create these uh, other uh, conversational plugin? I decided to use uh, the new uh, technique that I'm going to show you right now, which is the one that allows you to go under the extend, still in preview, extend section. And from here, you can add power platform components and you can choose to create, uh, for example, a component of type conversation. You select this item, you provide a name. Now I'm just going to create a, a fake one so I don't care about the name. Let me create it. It will take a while to build actually under the cover the same engine as before, but we will have an interface uh, which will be fully focused on creating uh, a conversational plugin. So, and this animation is always amazing, so worth watching, but it should be ready in a matter of few seconds from now. And then we will be ready to create <clears throat> new topics, and here we are. So first of all, we can uh, provide in this topic section as many as uh, conversational plugins as we like. So we can click on add conversational plugin. And again, we will have the trigger. Here we need to provide a proper description of what we are going to provide as a service. So what we are going to provide. Then we need to add an action, which can be, for example, a generative answers action as like as I did before. We can use the activity text as like as before to get the input from the user. And we can configure the data source, which can be a public website as like as before, can be SharePoint, so a SharePoint site in order to index the content of a document library, for example, or an Azure OpenAI service, or even custom data of your own. By doing that, you can uh, rebuild exactly what I showed you before, and eventually, if you want, you can also send a message as a response, including into the uh, conversation so that we can reach the answer with a predefined message or, uh, or highlighting something which is really important for us. Once you are done, you can save and publish your uh, custom plugin. Again, let me show you the one that I created for real. So let me leave this UI and let me show you the Copilot Studio Docs that I created. And in this one, again, under the topics section, I created the MCS Docs, which is configured as like as I was showing you before. So there is a description. We have the uh, data source for the generative answer, which is the uh, URL of the official documentation of Microsoft uh, uh, Copilot Studio. And I also want to uh, uh, remind to the user that they need to keep into account that they need to have proper licensing to use Copilot Studio. And that's what I'm doing right here. I publish my plugin and it will become available in the UI of uh, Copilot for Microsoft 365. One uh, last interesting thing that I want to share with you is that if you go under the uh, settings section and you go into the advanced uh, panel of the settings, you can also configure application insights on Azure to keep track of uh, the usage and of what's going on with your custom plugins. And by doing that, you can collect information in application insights about all of the uh, steps that are happening under the cover of your custom uh, plugin, which is, in my opinion, really, really interesting for learning purposes and for debugging purposes. So here, for example, I can see uh, the steps uh, behind the scene of an interaction that I had this morning. And here I can see that my request was uh, started, my topic was started. I can see that I have the generative answer triggering, where here I can see the question that was provided, the prompt that was provided by the user. I can see the answer that I've got uh, from the generative answer component, but I can also see, for example, here that I'm sending back the response uh, to Copilot together with an additional message, which is the one about uh, keeping into account uh, the licensing. So. It is a really interesting option for easily and quickly building uh, plugins uh, 
for Copilot in Microsoft 365 without basically writing any real line of code, but just configuring the topic in Copilot Studio. And there are also uh, really useful uh, tools to help you debug, whether using application insights or using the developer mode to debug what's going on and to figure out how Copilot is handling your custom plugins. So let me switch briefly back to the slide deck just to share with you a couple of links, which I'm going to send in the chat as well. And that said, I think that's all for me. And uh, back to you, Vesa. Thank you. Thank you.